Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. And folks, uh, again, like I said, we're right in the midst of um, the political agenda, if you will. It's, it's very heavy at this point in time. Yeah. It's getting down to the point now that uh, we'll be looking at the primary. You'll be getting your your, your, your voters guides in the, in the mail here next week, by this weekend. And the following week, you'll be getting your ballots. And then hopefully a determination will be made that we'll be electing officials that will hopefully be responsible enough to take us into the whatever century. Sometimes I want to go back, if you will. But anyway, welcome to the show. Uh, <laughs> what we're going to do this, this in this particular hour, we're going to spend a little time with the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs, and they're having a, a quite a quite an event here in the in the state of Oregon. Just happens to be That's here in, the, in Portland, in Portland, Oregon, and uh, it's really a great, uh, it's an excellent opportunity. We have not had, if you will, yet as of today, uh, some sort of a, an introduction, if you will, of African Americans running for office. And this will probably be the, a one-stopper, if you will, where you'll have the opportunity to see folks from around the state who, uh, well, look like me, I guess, to a certain degree. That's correct. And look like look like <laughs> a nation right there, right there. But the bottom line is that I think it's going to be a very neat affair, and uh, and, and everyone is welcome because even though if, if these folks are elected to office, they're going to be representing Oregonians across the board. That's correct. But we've always made an issue of our minorities and women in the state of Oregon, and this just happens to be one where there's a major focus in, uh, in African Americans uh, actually getting into the political process. So it's come one, come all type routine. I will definitely be there and hopefully do my little 10 minutes worth or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully you'll vote for me too along this line. I'm from the city of Portland running for mayor. But uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to get sort of an update. Uh, we have one of the one, one of the premier supporters of, of Cal. Cal has always been sitting in this seat over here. But now she's running this piece. Now this is really great. It's just really great. So wow. welcome again. Thank you. Always a pleasure. I'm happy to be back, okay, Bruce. Good, Thank good. you for inviting good. me. So what we'll do, maybe we might take the opportunity to spend a little time, give, it, give us an update of where we are at this point in time. And then if time permits, we'll talk about maybe an issue or two that you might want to just slip on the table here with us and that you guys might want to, that you guys will probably have a discussion on. Is that fair? Lovely. Okay, Lovely. fine. So where are we now? Okay, you that. mentioned Cal and the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. Right. I did recently come back to Oregon uh, to assist Cal and the organization. The organization is the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, and as you know, we sponsor the Oregon Black Political Convention. I am now the vice president, wow. assisting, oh, gee, assisting the all president. These, all these years, I haven't gotten anything. And the <laughs> steering committee. <laughs> it's been no, a challenge, a uh, but it's job. lovely work. I've well, enjoyed yeah. the political scene for all of my life. Good. And yeah. the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs, you've been a part of it. Yeah. Uh, the many African Americans in yeah. Oregon, right. uh, Bernie Foster, yeah. all of, all um, them, yes. Sam Brooks, Loretta Smith. Right. Right. I've all participated uh, with the organization, um, and or Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs has been here since 1977. Wow, time yeah. passes. Yeah, this is our 20th successful convention mm. coming up, mm. and information can be found on our website mm -hmm. at www.oaba.us. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what's the excitement this time around? Oh, what the excitement the is this presidential election year, there are so many issues and um, just a galvanization of participation we're seeing from mm -hmm. young people, uh, multi-generational. Mm -hmm. This year, we're highlighting our college interns. Mm. We have college interns participating from Mount Hood Community College, mm -hmm. Uh, Portland Community College, Cascade Campus, mm -hmm. and Chemeketa Community oh, College wow. down right. where I live in wow. Salem. Wow. So, okay. And once again, the Black Political Convention is statewide in focus, participation, the public is invited, candidates come mm -hmm. from across the state, mm -hmm. and uh, we're excited. We're oh, great, excited to great, be a part great, of it. Great, great. You did mention that this is a forum where black 
candidates are invited uh, to participate. It is a black-oriented uh, invitation and political convention. Mm -hmm. What the motto is for the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs is what benefits blacks exactly. benefits exactly. all Oregonians. And Oregonian Oregonian wants to know. Yes, they absolutely. Know. Accomplishment absolutely. or not, one way or the other. And what are their issues? Right? You got me? That is correct. Okay. And once again, elected officials, be they black, white, Hispanic, whatever, Maybe whomever, they, they are responsible and accountable for representing all the citizens yeah, oh, of yeah, Oregon. Very much so. And very that's what so. our convention yeah, yeah. and uh, the organization strives to okay. uphold. Okay. And that's a very important meeting that you just made mention about the point you make there. Because, uh, you know, we've got various programs and whatever in. And there's not that many uh, blacks in Oregon, per se. You know, we're only hovering about, what, 8, maybe 9, 10% or something like that? I don't have the, the correct number. That are running for office? No, no, just, just black or, as a population. Oh, but the percentage is very small, very like small yeah. in Oregon. Yeah. Again, uh, census, all, all of that has mm -hmm. to be taken into uh -huh. consideration. Mm -hmm. Personally, I go with the one-drop theory. Yeah. And, yeah okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's, that's where we are today. That's fair. That's fair. Well, like yes. I said, you hold. You know, Cal's always kind of like held, held it here in the Portland metropolitan area. Well, the people tend to in Oregon tend to identify or Portland as kind of like a, a the, the greater majority, if you will, of, of African Americans residing here within. But that's changing. That's changing quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, I'm in Salem, and the convention has been held in Salem yeah. before. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Sure. Right. Good. Good. Okay. Let's get down to. Some, uh, 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 what's going to be the format for getting that information out in terms of uh, what are the issues for, for African Americans? Uh, how are you going to do that? Well, one of the work of the convention takes place on Saturday, Saturday the okay. 23rd of April, mm -hmm. beginning at 8 o'clock. But prior to that, we have our popular Friday night youth activity. Mm, okay. And this year, at this year's convention, the youth will be developing the youth platform mm. there at the Friday night activity. And again, this is bringing them into um, uh, as valuable parts mm -hmm. and as uh, recognizing them as individuals who drive these, uh, who hmm. put their concerns and their issues forward. Hmm. They'll be able to interact with candidates and with other leaders in the community. Mm. So, so that'll be that, that's the Friday. Activity. That's the Friday night youth activity that begins at 7 p.m. Okay. on Friday the 22nd. Okay. Again, Multnomah County Commissioner Loretta Smith, she's always been a promoter of okay. the convention okay. there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so she'll be talking and we're not sure if she's going to be in town that day. That day. Okay, okay. Yes. Any yes. other representative? Or anybody else is going to be talking to that issue? I, there idea? will be no, there will be a number of candidates. No, no, and candidates I'm there. sure they'll probably participate yes. in that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, now you've got that. And nice. then, so then Saturday, is the actual work of the con the convention. Mm -hmm. Every registrant is a delegate to the convention. They'll be able to participate on the convention platform okay. issues, platform planks, which are the issues, and they develop resolutions, uh, which is the final document okay. of the convention. Um, there's discussion on each plank. Uh, only delegates can participate in the development of those planks, so we encourage everyone to be registered and that includes the student reg registration okay, as okay, well. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Any particular planks that we might be uh, that might be of interest to my, to the viewing audience here at this point? We Any have a number of uh, yeah, yeah. planks okay. this year. Are, we're highlighting constitution, the United States Constitution okay, okay. and Oregon Constitution, as well as issues concerning state-sanctioned discrimination. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, which which of the amendments are you guys going to be discussing in the, in the Constitution? Anything particular? Well, we are going to be discussing voting issues, quite a number. Voting, right. voting, okay, but voting, is, yeah, yes. I guess that has yes, been an issue. Yes, the key one. Okay, 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 all right. So then, the other part of the convention uh, on Saturday is a working lunch, and during that time, candidates come in and speak to the convention. Um, then there's additional work sessions 
in the afternoon and additional candidates come in. We've broken okay. them down into federal, state, and mm -hmm. our local mm -hmm. ones come in in the afternoon. Okay. Following that, we have the popular Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs Awards and Recognition okay. Ceremony. Okay. And that's a banquet. Okay. Our keynote speaker there will be Miss Alicia Moreland Capuya of oh. the Capuya Foundation. And also entertaining us will be Mike Crenshaw. He's okay. our okay. educator and conscious okay. rap Your speaker, artist. Your speaker, what, what does she bring to the table? What's her message? She's going to be talking about those issues on the platform, and oh, all okay. of the uh, convention and platform materials will mm -hmm. be on our convention mm -hmm. site. Mm -hmm. Again, for the benefit of the viewing audience, now, what's her background in terms of, you, you mentioned about who is... Miss Alicia Capuya Morgan, Dr. Okay. Alicia Capuya Morgan. Okay. Uh, she is an Oregon native raised up in Portland Northeast area, went to school, Stanford, I believe it is, and um, educated as a psychiatrist. Okay. One of the issues that uh, is my, my major interest, because mm -hmm. I come from a medical social security uh, disability platform, the fact that she's a psychiatrist, when we are dealing with issues like state-sanctioned discrimination, issues about youth education and mm. so forth. What we're finding is that uh, issues surrounding bias and so forth, disenfranchisement of mm. people because of their color, definitely creates a psychological mm -hmm. impact which uh, certainly colors your, your ability to function in this society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think Ms. Dr. Uh, Moreland Capuya, her background and her advocacy in the community lends to many of those areas. Mm -hmm. So well, that's good. We're excited. It, it'd be interesting because um, education is a major issue here Absolutely. within the city of Portland, being that it's the, besides being the largest, largest public school, uh, in the in the in the state, for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, they've they've got issues. You know, and one of the issues that I'm very interested in is the voc ed, and how it how it plays and what role it plays, if you will, uh, within within that that venue. You got me. And um, and then naturally, when you think about some of the events we've just been having of late, and people are very concerned, uh, we're getting ready to get into summers. There's been a lot of shootings lately. In fact, there was a shooting yesterday. And you know, with young people again, see a lot of young people, if you will, uh, are now um, uh, in the in, in in using vehicle. I mean, using weapons of of, of destruction, if you will. <laughs> and uh, there's a major concern about this whole piece. And 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 folks want to know what, what what can we do about these issues? You know what I mean? So maybe yeah. there might be some insight that she might be able to share with us. And that's one of the reasons. One of the critical reasons that we're asking for all as many members of the black community to participate because mm -hmm. again this is a forum for uplifting mm -hmm. the black community it's a forum for bringing your our youth into a vehicle of participation mm -hmm. Uh, into the political process. Mm -hmm. Our theme is empowering people through the political process. Mm -hmm. When you engage youth into something viable, mm -hmm. into something sustainable, again, mm -hmm. this is since 1977, right. you will see results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, will youth be participating in that, in that part of it with, with her after her speak or during her speaking? I'm mean, just saying in terms of back and forth with uh, will the audience yeah we we anticipate they they will be there to interact with the okay. youth as well okay yes. so so there will be an opportunity for to to participate oh yes yes okay. yes and okay. not only with her but with elected officials who are making decisions that impact their lives mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's the thing and the other part i mentioned the college internship program one of that key that's a key part of the convention again these individuals pair with elected officials 
for keeping their issues and concerns in the forefront. Okay, okay, okay. So, and so developing you, themselves as political le leaders in the futures, okay. if they're so inclined. Well, you have elected officials uh, participating in this, this particular... Oh, yes, huh? yes. Okay. They're, they're always event e invited, and we typically have an awful lot mm -hmm. of elected officials, those who are candidates, mm -hmm. uh, participating, because... While this is a politi the political convention season, mm -hmm. and one of the things I emphasize is it does not stop at the day of the convention. Mm -hmm. We're in an entire cycle. Everything we do is politics and process. Mm -hmm. We want to be at the table. We want to be effective. Mm -hmm. And we want to be inclusionary, which okay. we are. Okay, okay, okay. Well, now, like you said, do you, you happen to have a... That listing, we talked about this the last time, the, the, the listing of African Americans who are running for office and, and those who are elected. Maybe you, you happen to have that, or do you? I you have, have that, that this time right around? here in my handy have, oh, okay, dandy. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. But they, they are going to be participating in the like. They have all been invited uh, okay. to the convention, and uh, I ant we anticipate, okay. yes. Okay. Uh, and speaking of that, the culmination of the convention is on uh, Sunday with the Saturday, I'm sorry, with the Sunday breakfast with black elected officials. Oh, okay. Yes. And then finally we do the endorsement of candidates mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. adjourn. Okay. So with that, uh, the breakfast with black political, um, it, black elected officials once again, we have youth participating, and they're able to see the example, mm -hmm. see a viable example mm -hmm. of people that look like them, mm -hmm. people who are of their background, uh, who are leaders, okay. and that certainly provides the example okay. uh, for them to okay. as aspire to. Okay. Again, let's go back to the uh, some of the issues that are going to be discussing. Can you, can, we, can you cite those, maybe? Can we stop a moment? Yeah, go on. What's Why? up? No problem. You Okay. I need to go outside. You need to go for a minute? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Good. All right, then. What I'll do, I'll just take a moment and just kind of fill you in on some of the other activities uh, uh, that uh, maybe I've been involved with. Uh, and this is going to go out and take out for just a, a, a couple minutes. It's going on. It's going on. It's okay. Good. No problem. No problem. Just walk through there. You just kind of blind me there for a moment. Okay. She'll be right back. She'll be right back with us, and we'll continue from that particular point on. I guess uh, maybe some of the things I will maybe talk about, uh, I don't know how much uh, you're, you're following, if you will, the national scene for that matter. I mean, boy, I'm telling you, the debates are really getting getting there. On the Democratic side, uh, Bernie uh, and also Hillary are really having it on the on the D side, the Dem as far as the Democratic side is concerned. They're really, really talking to the issues, and, and uh, it's, it's getting down, folks, to a very serious situation. As you know, uh, in both of the both of the um, uh, both camps, if you will, on the Republican side and the Democratic side, you also have two outsiders. One outsider for each one of them. So you have an insider uh, uh, component, and then you have an outsider component. And the way they define those two components is that Bernie Sanders and the Democratic side would be identified as the outsider, and the insider uh, would be uh, uh, with that of uh, uh, former former uh, Secretary of, of State uh, Hillary Clinton. And uh, so that's a kind of interesting scenario. And Bernie, his, his definition is that he's an independent and he's a socialist. And it's kind of interesting that, that uh, he's running again as a, as a Democrat. It's going to be interesting when they get to that point of, of uh, well, who, who's Bernie? And it's interesting, but, he's, but, but the guy is very enthusiastic. I mean, he's talking to issues that, 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 uh, that really resonate among the, the voting public. He's bringing folks to the table that have not been involved for many, many, many years, if you will, and especially the youth. And he's all over the place. And even in, here in the, in the state of Oregon, uh, he's, he's a very popular figure aspect of it. But then don't, don't, uh, don't take that away from, don't take anything away from uh, uh, Hillary, because uh, our secretary is a, is a well-spoken person. She's well-known, and, and she, too, she's quite a debater, too. I mean, she's a very interesting person. But anyway, it, it's very, it, it's, it's very informative, and and I would uh, I would su suggest and recommend that when you get your 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 voters pamphlet um, 
uh, beginning next week that you may want to spend the time to to maybe get into some of those uh, present come on sit down just have a seat uh, uh, presentations of uh, of that particular campaign that, that particular part of the of the whole issue of campaign so it's going to be very important it'd be good it'd be a good exercise to give you a better feel of uh, uh, when you read the material in your voters pamphlet your voters yeah your voters guide and then actually seeing them going through the, this whole issue of of uh, giving making that presentation as to why you should be voting for them okay and on the republican side i, I say republican side because as you know the outsider was um, was a, a, a very businessman, Donald Trump. I need not tell you who he is. If you if you even haven't seen TV, you knew who Donald Trump was, because the media made it a very clear figure that uh, that he was running, and, and he's up there. He, he's right up there again, comparable to to um, uh, to, to to Bernie Sanders. Uh, he's out there. He's getting folks that are, that are getting involved, if you will, in the process. That in most cases are, are saying, "Hey, we're out." And where did that come from? In all due respect. Um, before this whole thing started, it was the, the people as a whole were saying uh, the, the, the Congress was having some very, very low marks. People did not relate to them at all. So, so it's kind of an interesting thing that, that, that we, need, we need not forget that because in all due respect, again, like I said, the insiders <laughs> were not given any respect whatsoever. And, and, all, and, and at the same time, Donald, between Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, they're getting folks to the table. And they're really talking about issues across the board, okay. and uh, and and that's kind of interesting piece. And so now uh, we've got uh, we've got a couple of them. Sometimes I don't even remember their names. I, whenever I talk about Republicans, <laughs> I remember about Donald Trump right off the bat. I don't I don't know anybody else but but well, Donald. We've got yeah. Ted Cruz. Okay, we've good, got good. John Casey. Okay, okay, but I'm, but you understand what I'm saying. See. Yeah. They were part of that other what 15 or so uh, at one point in time. They had a number. Whatever. But the fact of the matter is. The issues are coming out on the table. The issues are being be, being responded to, and and uh, and the media is having the, the same question, if you will, yeah. because they've been pretty well controlling the whole deal. But guess what? Those two individuals have brought the issues to the table, and now media is having to kind of recap themselves yeah. and trying to relate to what they're bringing to the table. And for the first time, as far as I'm concerned, the little folks are being recognized. I think that's I think. And it's the a good fact idea. that you're you know, running for mayor right. of the city of Portland. You're a stalwart uh, resident, citizen of and an Portland outsider. here. And an outsider. And a veteran. And, yeah, and a veteran. That's right. An That's right. A Marine and, veteran. And you're able to bring the yeah. unique issues yeah. to the table yeah. 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 concerning those things that um, all citizens are interested in well, here I, I, in Oregon. I, I appreciate so. what you're saying, yeah, because yeah, like I said, I've, I've done a, a number of things here. I've, I've built a housing. I've built a senior citizen complex. I've remodel houses. I've owned a newspaper at one point in time. In fact, I owned two newspapers at one point oh in time. Oh, my goodness. I, I've run for office. And, and, you know, now as I think back about um, about being an outsider, uh, that meant that An I outsider had, inside. Well, well, no, well, actually, not. I, I couldn't be an insider because I wasn't allowed <laughs> to get to the table. So what I had to do, I had to earn my right. Well. So it was an on-the-job training. So I've run for office, and so I know the issues. Bottom line, backwards, sideways, and whatever. And uh, and I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable with that situation, and it's going to be a blessing, if you will, if if I do win. I'm, uh, I'm my my whole platform is making sure that this city is safe. Uh, it, it's it's safe and a clean city. It's a clean city. That's what I I mean. The Portland uh, city of roses, if you mm -hmm. will. But there are other issues. Now. There are senior citizen issues. There are youth issues. Uh, you know, again, there's, there's veterans issues aspect of it, which I identify with uh, personally. And uh, and so it, it all means a lot. And and it just be, being a part of the table now, I'm able to throw it out there on the table and, and they have to react to it. And that makes it good. And you've got an excellent platform here. Ooh. I do appreciate, oh, appreciate. Uh, the Oregon Voters Digest. Um, the guests you have on uh, provide a wide, wide array of interest. And again, congratulations. Well, I appreciate that. And I think, in all due respect, the uh, Cal falls in the same deal. You know, he he sort of been a outsider for a long time, <laughs> if you will. And and I I like to kind of give him some respect whatsoever because because an issue African Americans has always been an issue. It's a small minority group, but they tend to identify as a majority when it comes to minorities and women, because you got minority yeah. and women groups, if you will, all throughout the country. Yeah. But the minority group and whatever is some something that has always been, folks have kind of 
well, what, where are we going and can you define it better and whatever. And yeah. Cal's been hitting at that door many, many, many times for many years, what, 20 years? And, and in Oregon, um, when you look at the, our logo, we, mm -hmm. the logo is the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. And the triangle represents the foundation mm -hmm. and all of those things that um, make Oregon great. Right, right, very much. So. As one of your candidates yes, is right yes, to say. Yes, yes, very, very so much. So we, wherever there is a black person in mm -hmm. the state of Oregon, mm -hmm. we consider that the black yeah, community, yeah, part of yeah, the black right, community. Right, right, right. So we don't limit ourselves to any specific area in mm -hmm. Portland because mm -hmm. of the concentration or lack thereof mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of black people. And they have participated in, in many, many ways, if you will. You got me? No, oh, absolutely. And, and, and so absolutely. that's what I'm saying. I like the idea of just having this convention type thing yeah. on an annual basis and and that uh, it should be the, the 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 as you say this triangle aspect yeah. of where we all meet so to speak yeah. you got me and the convention is nonpartisan we've participated over the years with the various governors governor Vicatia, governor neil goldschmidt governor barbara roberts uh, governor kate brown today you know so well good 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 well, now that you're Very back exciting. again, anything, anything, anything else we may want to, we might talk about any particular issue. Um, you were asking about the issues, um, and again, these are on our platform and our platform planks, and the two, two or three new ones we have: state-sanctioned discrimination against okay. black, uh, black Americans is one, and the other is the United States Constitution. Supreme Court nominee. Mm -hmm. There's been a huge debate mm -hmm. over um, mm -hmm. the president's nomination for Supreme Court justice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one of the things we're doing is asking um, the uh, Congress to be sure to adhere to the, the Constitution in that regard. Mm -hmm. But as you know, it's, it's very political still, see? I mean, whoever picks up the odd, the odd number we we'll pretty well control the court, fair? And again, empowering people through the political process, that's what we're all about. I got you. Politics got you. is everything, and everything is politics, well, you know, and yeah, we're definitely so. at very the table. So. And folks need to understand that, too, because, you know, it's, it's a tie, it's a 4-4 four four type situation, but it's still able to work somewhat because, because the first thing is that it has to be presented to the court and then discussed, and then the decision is made by the court. But now, whatever's being presented, uh, they can just basically say, now, if you present something and say you uh, you disagree with something, whatever you disagree, let's set that aside. But if someone is challenging something, then it continues on. Mm -hmm. You see what That's I'm saying? True. See what I mean? That's true. That's so, true. So there's still business there, but in terms of uh, finalizing the opposition, that's, that's going to be determined based on who's going to have the, the fifth vote. And that's a great segue into one of the other issues that we're going to be talking okay, about on our okay. platform, and that's citizenry duties and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. If the citizens don't actively participate in their government, and that doesn't mean going to the ballot and voting and then going home and sleeping mm -hmm. the rest mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. You've got to be actively participating in these uh, political activities and processes. Well, I agree with you, because in all due respect, they're not sleeping now, trust me. Yeah. With the two outsiders on each side, they're making sure that people are waking up. <laughs> and, and we're just talking about we're just, we're just talking about the, 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 the primary now. We're not talking about the general. Yeah. So, I mean, and as, as if it's a general now. You, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And that's the other reason I really love your show. Because, again, once the primary is over, there's a continuum of oh, issues big time, to be discussed. Big time, big time. And I look forward to coming back. Oh, yeah. Back you got to uh, come back. And we're going to really, really get down to the business. Because, then, because the, the issue of immigration and things of that nature oh. has been sort of set aside right yes. now for a bit. But yes. that's a major, major major issue and we're gonna to have to deal with something along that line true okay so not here. so what we'll do we'll just take a short break anyway we'll just take a short break and then we'll uh, we'll see what we're going to be coming from that point on okay okay so stick around okay okay Thanks. all right good <laughs> we'll be right back you are watching Oregon Voters Digest this program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome again to this segment of Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and now in the roundabout way, we're going to kind of change my hat here for a moment. Shahid is here. You've seen Shahid here before. Um, he's going to take the take the hat now of, of sort of interviewing me, and, and just by when I say interviewing me, basically, mm -hmm. because I happen to be running for mayor, it gives us the opportunity to talk about issues that are relevant um, to the city of Portland, mm -hmm. and we're going to take advantage of the mayorship. Mm -hmm. That's really what we'd be doing, right? Right, you got right, right. And then in some cases, he's going to probably throw some input to me, and then I'll maybe, uh, so, so, so indirectly, I'll be able to take those input, whatever the, those major concerns are, and then I'll bring it to the whole table of those other individuals mm -hmm. that are running for office, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then educate the media. Great, very important. <laughs> so with you, with that, G, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bruce. Good, good, and good, uh, good. how you how you doing? Oh, just fantastic. Um, you know, and uh, as I indicated uh, when I when I filed to run for office, with mm -hmm. my history aspect of it, mm -hmm. I found that um, it's, it's far better to just be the mayor at the time of filing mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to the to the uh, May 17th deadline for the primary. And so what I've been doing, I've been going around meeting people and talking to the issues and meeting the people about the issues mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm representing, mm -hmm. like the homeless issues. I'm out there talking to the homeless folks and, mm -hmm. and knocking on doors and, and trying to still trying to find out where the veterans are. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd gone down to City Hall and identified, we tried to identify with the mayor to ask him, give me a listing of where these folks are. Mm -hmm. And in all due respect, uh, I got no I got no results. So I went out that's there. That's not got, too surprising. I got, that's say. right. So I found out myself. That's one. Of, that's one of the major reasons I'm mm -hmm. running. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I did that piece, and then, um, as you know, we, as a result of the um, uh, the murals over here that has been defaced over here on Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, mm -hmm. uh, I I responded to that. Okay. They had been defaced, been around here for 26 years, and I went to the office of the person who had that bureau, which was Nick Fish. Mm -hmm. No response. Mm -hmm. So then I went and followed Again, up. Again, not surprising. Yeah, but, but, but I followed up with it, and then there was a there was a dear person that, uh, that I'd worked with when she first put that piece together, mm -hmm. Eloise. Mm -hmm. She's the Arts Commission person, and as you know, the, a lot of folks don't like to pay that art tax mm -hmm. aspect of it, mm -hmm. but people really appreciated the fact that uh, this was the artwork and, and, the, and the kinds of young people that were involved in that process and, and a notable uh, artist uh, mm -hmm. in, in uh, in Sampson Dean, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so now they're working on it. They're gonna they're gonna pick up the dollars and and put it together, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's that was good. That was an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then then on the on the crime scene aspect of it, uh, the whole issue of public safety. Mm -hmm. I've been meeting folks, talking about that, meeting young people, and one of the old friends you might have known. His name is Casson. You know, Casson, Casson up there in in, in Kenton. Uh -oh. Up in Kenton, oh, yeah. who has the meat uh -huh. deal or whatever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's kind of unique. I went to meet mm -hmm. with him, and we chatted or whatever, because I knew that that he had had, uh, had been taking some of the uh, ex-offenders, you know, folks who were getting out of the institution, right. and hiring them, and teaching them a trade, teaching them how to cut meat and how to run a store and this, that, and the other. And so, as a result of that, he and I are going to be getting together and. And we're going to actually put together an apprentice program mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. and I'm going to contact the people at Safeway and and Fred Myers and folks like that, and and kind of getting the criteria mm -hmm. for their apprenticeship program, mm -hmm. and there'll be kind of a training center, mm -hmm. uh, and that that's a real good that's deal. That's real, real good. And, and then meeting some of those young people mm -hmm. that were there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in fact I put them on Facebook. That was the other way I was able to communicate to the public mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean mm -hmm. not just talking about it, right. but actually doing it. Putting you know, some programs together. Putting some programs there. That's and that's good. and that's really critical, uh, Bruce. I think this this election particularly is maybe one of the most critical elections that Portland has had in some time, in my view. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it, it revolves around the whole issue of livability. Mm -hmm. If you look at livability, I mean, you know, what a lot of us and a lot of people who came to Portland uh, for is slowly slipping away you know the things that attracted so many so many of us to portland is slowly sitting away i mean house housing mm -hmm. uh like you say the youth without any employment you know, uh, a non-responsive mm -hmm. uh city government uh when you look at health care mental health yeah. uh, availability mm -hmm. in, in the community mm -hmm. when you look at the density oh. the density with which they are building yeah. Oh. It just is it, 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 it defies any kind of logic yes. in terms of livability. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is why I think I'm mm -hmm. glad that you're running and that you're aware of these issues and that you're getting out and talking to folks because it, it's it's really important to find out you know how folks feel and 
and offering solutions. I think jobs with with our young people, like you were talking about, Casey and in the, mm-hmm. in the, in the, in the, in the I know Voc Ed is a real oh, yeah, pet, big big time of me. Yeah, yes. yeah, very, very very close to your heart. And you know when we look at uh, the shootings. Oh yes, that, I, we won't talk about that. Let's talk about the shootings. That. And I mean, you know, here they had, they had a running gun battle, forty five casings, bullet casings, at Ainsworth and MLK, the mm-hmm. Popeyes, and so mm-hmm. forth. And mm-hmm. and I, I I heard that they had it's one Safeway, well, by Safeway me. But by and, you, and Safeway, yeah, Jensen yeah. Beach, that's right. Know? So the livability issue is touches so many of these yep. areas, mm-hmm. so many of these areas, and I like to know. Uh, of course, they had a meeting. I, I understand with Mayor Hills came up to the North Precinct mm-hmm. uh, yesterday about this uh, Devonte uh, Dickinson, I think it was, mm-hmm. uh, the family of this gentleman. And it's the same old promises, yeah, the same, same thing he's been promises. saying for for years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. It, even now, City Club, I think, is coming yeah. out with yeah. their yeah. urging, yeah. sort of like a moratorium, yeah. if you will, mm-hmm. on on new housing and mm-hmm. getting a mm-hmm. some affordable housing up in place so mm-hmm. that people can can get housing. The rents are being 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 priced mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. So if 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 we don't get a responsive city government this election cycle, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I, I I mean, I, I you know, I. To see what Portland is going to look like. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Shaheed, in all due respect, uh, that you hit on a good heart point with me. It says there's 16 people running for mayor. Here's an opportunity to bring these people to the table. They are running. They filed to run for office. So as far as I'm concerned, we have an opportunity to pick the better, best of the litter. Mm-hmm. But we got to make sure we bring all the litter to the table. They're not bringing everybody to the table. Just why when you started with reference to uh, one of the 16, which is Charlie Hill, because he's going to be there till November. So mm-hmm. see, he's still, but he's the incumbent. So he's got access to the books. So when that, when that, as you say, when that situation happened up there about the shooting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, he should have called all the rest of the folks who were running for office mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and bring them in that so to educate mm-hmm, them, mm-hmm. inform them about what's going on. Don't just hold it to themselves. You know, he'll be gone. Mm-hmm. Well, this is not about OJT time, on-the-job training time. <laughs> These are serious times. So that should be an orientation. Whoever's in office at the incumbent, mm-hmm. that should be an orientation mm-hmm. across the board, not just, if you will, at the city club at 12 noon downtown. It's got to be in the community. In the community. In all the communities, for that matter. We got 100, we got 100 neighborhoods in this area, and we got, we got seven neighborhood associations. As far as I'm concerned, you got to bring them to the table. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if you don't engage mm-hmm. them, we're not going to solve this problem. We're not going to solve this problem. Right. So that's a very important piece. That, like you said, the shooting up in, uh, at the, the same thing over there where I was, aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Somebody should have contacted the rest and had a, had a session. That, why not? Mm-hmm. Educate those folks. Mm-hmm. Educate all those candidates about that piece. Because I, I have a version or whatever, but I've got some insight. I think, mm-hmm. I think they, they, these other individuals that are running, whether people say, well, they, they, they this, they're not this, they this, that, this. Hey, they file. Treat them just like mayors. Mm-hmm. So we have mm-hmm. the benefit, if you will, of talking to them. Maybe there might be an answer with a person that ordinarily you would think, well, gee whiz, this person, how did he come up with that answer? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not about, quote, holding back. We got a problem. I looked at, like you said, we looked at the Tribune there, mm-hmm. that, that situation. You had two seniors there where, where, this, where they had shot in their houses. What about those folks? Mm-hmm. What about those seniors? They can't go anywhere. They can't sit on that ta- on that porch and whatever. Well, guess who's going? Casey and I. We're going to contact those people. Mm-hmm. We want to. We want to see how they're feeling. And I'm. I was concerned about. Did they have any 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 law enforcement to make sure they were able to sleep that night? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Those are very serious things. Mm-hmm. Now, I would have thrown those kind of on the table aspect of it. I'm not. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I understand. See, it's not about holding back. That's why I said I've learned. After having run as much as I have, that it's just a whatever, mm-hmm. just sitting up there going at debate and interviewing and whatever. Mm-hmm. No, let's get down and get your hands dirty. Mm-hmm. Talk to the people. They, they had a, uh, a forum, so to speak, with six candidates on uh, uh, Channel 6, I think it was last, last week or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And none of those individuals 
approach some of the more serious matters. You know, they, they're talking about revenue and, yeah, yeah. and things of that nature. But livability, hey. <laughs> livability is the things that I thought that they should have been addressing and, and even taking you up on your invitation to, to come here on this particular yeah. program. And, yeah, you and, asked and, We asked yeah, you. Know, we asked some, yeah. And we have, have yet to get any responses. And I think this is one of the reasons why even the city club sees that the city is going the wrong direction. And that they need, they need, there must be immediate, immediate response to this to the to the housing situation. Yes, oh, I, I agree. I you agree. Know, I and, agree. And what they've done in terms of pushing the uh, African American community out in the numbers and so yep. forth. Yep. Now we have two two areas that we have to be cognizant of, uh, and try to get police protection and so forth. Uh, I mean, we, we talked about the, the, the Portland Tribune uh, issued uh, an article about the shortage of police. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, is anybody is anybody going to talk about that? You know what I mean? When, I you can. Know, I, <laughs> you know, I can. You know, right up front, when you say when you say shortage of the troops, you got to define shortage for what. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean? mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to engage. Those neighborhood associations. Absolutely. Bottom Absolutely. line, because in all due respect, these young people who are shooting, they have family members. Absolutely. And by engaging them, if you will, now you can start talking about real solutions. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. just about police force. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got I me? Mean? Mm -hmm. It's about the engagement of the folks that are out there. And Portland has always been a city that has been really attentive to neighborhood associations. Very much so, very much so. But they're and not they're lacking now. And they're lacking now. They're lacking it now. You know, and I like to know what kind of effort the mayor is putting putting forth to rejuvenate that 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 area, to address that area in terms of neighborhood neighborhood associations and strengthening the ties and listening to, you know, put their ears to the to the ground and see what's you know, what's going on and see what they have to say about some of the solutions that, that yeah, are being offered yeah, and yeah. maybe they, they have some solutions themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I think it's really, really, really very, 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 very important. Well, see, she, and, uh, on that thing, I, I like what you said. You, see, you notice how you said, you said the mayor. Mm -hmm. You didn't talk about the commissioners because <laughs> we don't even know who the commissioners are. Right. We got four people sitting at City Hall, right? You right. got me? Right. And they've got maybe their specific bureaus, if you will. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, got me? Mm -hmm. And they're just sitting there. So, it, and it's no fault of, of Charlie. It's just that's the way we've been running our city government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What we need to do, we got to get those other folks at the table. It's kind of like saying you got five mayors, you got one mm -hmm. senior mayor, and you got you got you got subordinates, if you will. Right, right. But you divide the city into four areas. Right. You get two neighborhood associations, whatever the you know you got you got seven of them. But the bottom mm -hmm. line, you divide those neighborhood associations, mm -hmm. and then you assign one of the city council person, just like you assign the bureaus. To each one of them, so they then become the communication right. between the mayors, as right. So they discuss those issues relative, whether right. it be whether whether it be gentrification, whether it be police, whether it be mental illness, because it'll vary a little bit from each one of those areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you put an auditor for each one of those areas mm -hmm. because it's about how much it's going to cost, right? Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. you attach that, you send those pr priority lists to the mayor's office. He puts it all together, so to speak, with a discussion. Make it transparent. Bring all the media to the table, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, these are the things that we can do with the money we have. Mm -hmm. We may have 15 items there, but you see what I'm saying? Right, right. Well, this is why the mayor is so important. Oh, although, very much so. Although, although, you know, because we have to have leadership. We got to. And coordination. He, he, he's the one that assigns the bureau. Exactly, right? exactly, and exactly. So, so it's really very, very important. Exactly. That, that that he be a hands-on, exactly. we need a hands-on person. Exactly. Like yourself in terms of, exactly. again, discussing the issues. That's right. Talking about exactly. issues. Exactly. And trying to address issues exactly. and looking for some 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 support exactly. in that area. If our youth, for example, very, very, very important because, again, you know, I'm a, I'm a chaplain in the, in the, for the Mount Loma County Sheriff's Office. And when we see these young African-American uh, young men, Without work, yep. without employment, yep. that's right. What do they think is going to happen, right. and they're not putting forth any programs or anything to address. It's it's more like uh, oops. Yeah. You know, we even look at it's uh, 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 
uh, in terms of addressing the youth employment, yep. it's like an afterthought. That's yep. the that's mm -hmm. the that's the word I'm mm -hmm. looking for of the mm -hmm. um, part of the mayor. Mm -hmm. Like an after, oh, we need jobs, and we well, we're going to work on this, and we're going to be working on that. This is after the yep. shootings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, what kind of what kind of plans are being put forth now to address the summertime mm -hmm. when yep. when we we already uh, exceeded our in terms of the shootings amount of shootings mm -hmm. last year? Yeah. We we are on record going on record to break that record. And we will. And we will. We and will. What about the, the the little old ladies at a home sitting yeah. in their home, That's home right. sitting in their That's homes? Right. And somebody comes shoot up the shoot shoot, shoot up their houses, yep. and bullets going all yep. over the place yep. like that. How can we as a community again livability? Yep, livability. That's right. right? That's right. That's right. How can we Being relax safe in your home? That's right. How can we be safe? We're yep. talking about exactly. making America safe. Exactly. Let's make Portland safe. That's right. That's, ex that's exactly right. Focus on that piece. Focus on yeah. That's you know right. what I'm saying? I and mean, the timing is now. And the timing we, we is now. You got to do know? it now. Not not quote when all of a sudden when the summer breaks out. We all know about the proliferation of guns, and you know people break in houses and, and they break in houses and they got all these guns, right? Mm -hmm. They got maybe six, seven guns in one particular house, mm -hmm. and they put them out on the street. I mean, a youth can get a gun quicker than they can get a joint. Hey, I'm telling <laughs> I hate you, to put it that I way. Mean, I'm telling you. You see what I'm saying? Really? They they stopped a the gentleman. Uh, it was in the news the other day. They they stopped a the gentleman who had expired license plate yeah. on his car, uh -huh. right? They searched the car and they found all kind of weapons in, in the car. They were in the houses. Yeah, yeah, See, the people houses. have been buying guns like like yeah. confetti, if right. you will. You see what I'm saying? Right. And rounds and this, that, and the other. But you know, we got to break that process. As far as I'm concerned, yes. I want to make sure that, as far as I'm concerned, I want to I want to break that cycle to a certain degree. If you got that many guns in your house, you got to make sure that they're secured. Mm -hmm. People can't have access, and if they're not. And my point is that that means that we want to make sure you got those numbers and this, that, and the other. And if they're involved in a shooting or whatever, and I'm making sure that the insurance company <laughs> makes sure that we know who owns those guns. Mm -hmm, right. And yes, they're going to have to be liable, if you will, in many ways. In you got many me? ways, right. They got to be liable. So it's because you got, we, we got to do something. We got we have too to many do guns. Something. We got to do something. Mayor, Mayor of New York, de Blasio, yep. and then you have Bloomberg, who's yep. very, yep. Uh, very attached to this. This idea of gun, some sort of gun control, gun registration, at least some kind of make yeah. some kind of effort yeah. to address this situation. Yeah. Yeah. And in Portland, what we have now is the what I call the ostrich yeah. effect. Mm. The city government got their heads in the in the hole in the ground. You know, when when citizens like myself, like yourself, like members of of the community of the community. Uh, are terrified and unsure. Am, am I going to be, you know, am I going to be a victim? Yeah, yeah. Before September yeah, comes yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. You know I'll saying? give you another. I'll give you another. For instance, this whole issue about the homeless. Okay, mm -hmm. I did the same thing. Went down to city hall. You know, basically, well, who's handling the homeless? Well, for the, they were talking about housing, right? Well, the guy who's in charge of the, of the housing bureau is Dan Salzman. Right, and then you look in the paper, and here's Dan. You know, he's, he's picked up about it. One, I'm not, not I'm not knocking about his private side, mm -hmm. but he he was well worth it for that last year about 1.2 million dollars. It was stated in stated in the paper in housing, in real estate. So the first thing I was asking when the when the, when they talked about uh, trying to find housing for the for the uh, for the homeless or the veterans aspect of it. If I was a mayor, the first thing I would have done, I said, Dan, how many have you put in your houses, mm -hmm. <laughs> in your apartments that you own? You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. He should be more responsible. And I went down to his office to say, can you tell me where the veterans are? Mm -hmm. I got nothing. I went to City Hall and, and spoke before City Council on that one Wednesday meeting. He saw me. I, they knew me. No one came out like they normally do mm -hmm. and send that staff person to a person and say, hey, look, once you, once you get Mr. Bristardo in, let, let's talk about this stuff. Bring him down to the office or, or whatever. Right. Nothing. I haven't heard, I haven't, no one's picked up the phone. The, all due respect, everybody that's running should be the mayor today so that they're running and dealing with issues when they get, whoever gets elected. Mm -hmm. 
They got to be a part of the process. It's not it's not about bringing a whole new staff. We'd have to be waiting another year and a half to two years before we get any kind of response to some of the major, major issues we're right. faced with right now. When you look at uh, a city council person having $1.2 million yeah. involved in, and he's in charge of housing yeah. and so forth. That's comp <laughs> you know, yeah, that's It might be some conflict of yes, interest yes, issues. Yes, yes. It may yes. not, not it may not be there is. But I, I consider but, him an authority, but right. the bottom line, I got to look at how much you were making when you first right, started. Right, right. And where are you today? Not that I'm and, saying. And these 16 people that are running. You understand what I'm saying? Everybody. Everybody. Look, look at, you know, I mean, this is really an issue this election season about the amount of monies that, 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 that these candidates have and deal with and some, yeah. of the, some of the issues that they deal with. Yeah. And they need to be held to a certain standard in being able to uh, withstand scrutiny uh, with respect to these issues, but, you, mean, but, but we can't hold them responsible now because the file, the, the filing process, when they give you that piece of paper, is just fifty dollars in your name and right. phone number. Well, the voters <laughs> program like Voters Digest can hold them responsible. Oh yeah, well, it right in front of you. We, we, that's why I'm running. Been, that's why you're running. That's why I'm running. And that's why you open up the, the, this forum. The, you know, that's to, why I'm running. You know. I will challenge the mayor or any city commissioner to sit right here, and let's talk about what we're talking about right now. No sidebar. Just come down here and sit down and let's talk about it. And I'm not trying to be anti them. I'm, I'm talking about me. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking right. about me, the voter too. Right. I mean, I, I, the last thing I need to be doing right now is running for office anyway. <laughs> I'm at my age, if you will, my no, point is that I've got a family and I got I grandkids. And I want to enjoy whatever, but I got to. Yeah. My family is well, not it, safe. Well, it's, 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 like, not it's safe. like me. I'm retired. Yeah. And Here we are. I would like to. I would like to relax and yes. not worry yes. about you know a lot of things that's going on. But you can't. No, you can't. You it can't. demands. Yeah. You're almost right. compelled. Yep. Yeah. You can't. To 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 speak out to, be, to to see what's happening in the community to see how you can make a contribution. Yes. 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 To what? To the livability. That's right. That's right. That's the right. The livability. Yeah. We have. If we don't have livability, what do we have? Yeah. <laughs> we, we look at the traffic. The traffic is a mess. Well, you got chaos. You, you know, look, yeah. the potholes. My wife oh, always talks gee. about the oh, potholes gee, is a mess. Gee. And you got. The, and you got all these folks just, just living outside. I mean, nowhere to go. The elements all over being the place. Uprooted, uh, uprooted, being uprooted. The whole nine yeah, yards. Does, and you yeah. don't even know who's sitting down there. I mean, right. a, a woman can't ride a bicycle, if you will, down the Gresham Trail without possibly being attacked and raped. That's what was that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, you look at it, you make an assessment of it. You got a jail, an empty jail, Wapato, big area, if you will. You can put the National Guard and them together, and all of a sudden, you got a processing plant to find out who's on the street. But they can be taken care of if they're mentally. You send them over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If the VA, if if, if they're vets, you, you you got more service, and you can get, bring those dollars in. But the bottom line is, that I go, I go down, I know this, right? So they've just changed the Wapato jail. That used to be under the jurisdiction of the sheriff because he had the physical structure. But the budget to put the operating money was held by Multnomah County. Mm -hmm. And they were playing politics with mm -hmm. it, okay? Mm -hmm. So now they've just shifted it. We found, I found that out. They've shifted it now, and it's, go it's going to be just the county's deal. Now, they're setting up committees. I called up the chair. I called up Deborah. In fact, I went down there and knocked on the door. But no call. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, I'm, I'm running for mayor. I got to work with the with the chair of the of the county, but the fact of the matter is, if I'm responsible, I'm 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 running. Call us all up. That should be the first committee. Absolutely. That should be the first committee with her, and then hold the committee and have a hearing right there in the, in the county room or whatever. Make it transparent. What can we do? Mm -hmm. well, as far as I'm concerned, they should open that place up yesterday. Absolutely. The moment they Absolutely. got that piece, they should have opened that place up. Absolutely. It's ready Absolutely. to go. Absolutely. Take all those people off those streets. Take Absolutely. them all up. Pick them all up. And if they, don't, if they need more space, get the armory. Call up the governor's office and say, okay, fine. We're going to use part of the armory. It's all fenced in. You know, whenever they call mm -hmm. a disaster with the National Guard, because I was National Guard, I was a warrant officer. Mm -hmm. they, call us, they call us up. We, hey, we got together and we had the tents, we had medical, we had food, we had the whole nine yard. Okay. Uh -huh. I think they are bringing some tent from Rose is Roosevelt High School. Uh, oh, they they have a, a big outdoor. Oh, they got eight. Hey, they they're, all, they're, they're well and they're, they're, sitting, they're well they're equipped. We got about two more minutes here yeah. now. But you know, you can you can see we we, we I'm appreciating what we're doing right now. But uh, and I appreciate you. We, we got an urgency right now, and I hope they didn't get the word. Absolutely. See, absolutely. Something has to be done. 
So look, um, we got about two more minutes, but I guess the only thing I can say, Shahid, uh, again, I thank you for being here, and hopefully next week we can do the same thing. This is it. Yeah, and I'm, I'll be knocking I'm, on them I'm doors at, again. I'm at your disposal. Well, I'm going to be knocking on those doors again. I'm going <laughs> to give you the results. of Right. What, and hopefully some people that are sitting up here looking at what we're doing right now will call up the mayor and yeah. say, hey, you need to include the other 15 right. people right. And, this, and bring them out right. to the table so we'll know what's going on. And you yourself, he, he himself need to come here. Oh, he has to come. I mean, he's an employee of, of, a, of us. Right. With employers. Right. The voters. The government of the and people, the by the people, and for the people. For the that's people. what it's all about, right? Right. Okay, Absolutely. so let's, let's make a, and, and, and I'm not, I'm personal now. <laughs> if I'm going to be running for mayor, I'm going to act like you're a gonna mayor. Have to, I'm going to be a mayor. You have to talk about the issues. That's right, and it's our money sitting up on that table, that's right. too. And okay. our safety. And, and our safety. And our livability. That's right. The livability, you're right, right on. The safety and the, and, 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 I, and the cleanliness of this city. I mean, it's ridiculous. And we've got all these folks that are sitting out there sleeping out, um, and just on and on. We haven't even dealt with the whole issue of marijuana yet. Mm. we got we got to get that. I mean, it's passed, but it's a federal law. And and you got the state law, so I we got we got a lot of issues to deal with. Retrofitting, I think, is a, is, a, is an issue. You yes, know, it's something that uh, we should be paying more attention to. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we got a lot of issues. But but thanks. Maybe they can get the, the program, and maybe they can come up with some ideas. I don't have to be the, the lead man. Charlie can be the lead man. But we got 16 mayors now running, Charlie. So let's get on the job. Give us a call. Take care. Again, have a good one. I'll see you next week, Shahid. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.